Welcome to the next in the series of the Building Safety Group's podcasts. Today's podcast is on the subject of dust on construction sites. So what we're going to be talking about is uh, different types of construction dust, the health risks involved with dust, some statistics that make quite frightening reading, legislation that regulates dust, the control measures that can be put in place and using PPE obviously as the last line of defence and then a little bit about BSG. So construction dust is not just a nuisance, it can seriously damage your health and some types can eventually kill. Uh, Regularly breathing these dusts over a long period of time can therefore cause life-changing lung diseases and construction dust is just a general term used to describe the different dusts that you may find on a construction site. Basically, there are three main types of construction dust. There's silica dust, wood dust, and then the uh, lower toxicity dusts. So silica dust is created when working on silica containing materials such as concrete, mortar, sandstone, and is also known as respirable crystalline silica, or RCS. Wood dust is created when working with softwoods, hardwoods and uh, wood-based products such as MDF and plywood, etc. And the lower toxicity dusts are created when working on materials containing very little or no silica. The most common include uh, things like gypsum, which is in plasterboard, limestone, marble and dolomite. Anyone who breathes these dusts should know about the damage they can do to the lungs and the airways. You may need to put a health surveillance program in place and you may need advice on this from an occupational health professional. The main dust related diseases affecting construction workers are lung cancer, silicosis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, asthma, and some lung diseases like advanced silicosis or asthma can come on quite quickly. However, Most of these diseases take a long time to develop. Dust can build up in the lungs and harm them gradually over time. The effects are often not immediately obvious and unfortunately by the time it is noticed the total damage done may already be serious and life-changing and it may mean permanent disability and early death. Each year around 3,000 workers in the construction industry suffer with breathing and lung problems they believe were caused or made worse by their work This is around 0.14% of workers in the sector. When asked about exposures contributing to their illness conditions, almost 20% of workers reporting work-related breathing and lung problems identified dust from stone, cement, bricks or concrete as contributing to their condition. And these exposures are often associated with the construction industry. Construction workers have a high risk of developing these diseases because many common construction tasks can create high levels of dust. Over 500 construction workers are believed to die from exposure to silica dust every year or nearly 10 a week. These next slides are from the HSE's presentation on construction related uh, ill health and uh, make quite startling watching. Every week From construction related ill health, 100 of us will die. So, legislation, the rules and regulations that control the uh, risk from dust. We see these are the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations, 2002, as dust is a, a substance that is hazardous to health. So, The Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations cover activities which may expose workers to construction dust. There are three key things you need to do. We need to assess the risk, control the risk and review the controls. Assess the risks linked to the work and the materials. Examples of high risk tasks are cutting concrete curbs, blocks and paving with a cut off saw, chasing concrete and raking mortar, cutting roof tiles with a cut off saw, scabbling or grinding with handheld tools. So the control measures we need to put in place, we need to stop or reduce the dust. Before work starts, look at ways of stopping or reducing the amount of dust you might create. Use different materials, less powerful tools and other work methods. The right size of building materials, so less cutting or preparation is needed. A silica-free abrasive to reduce the risks when blasting 
and a less powerful tool, for instance, a block cutter instead of a cut-off saw, and a different uh, method of work altogether, for instance, a direct fastening system. If you can't eliminate the dust completely, the most important action is to stop the dust getting into the air, and there are two ways of doing this. Either water suppression or on tool extraction. So the water suppression water damps down dust clouds, however, it needs to be used correctly. This means enough water supplied at the right levels for the whole time that the work is being done. Just wetting the material beforehand just doesn't work. On tool extraction removes the dust as it is being produced, and it's a type of local exhaust ventilation system that fits directly onto the tool. This system consists of several individual parts, the tool, the capturing hood, the extraction unit and tubing. Use an extraction unit to the correct specification, for instance, high, medium, or a low class filter. Don't just use a general commercial vacuum cleaner. Water or on tool extraction may not always be appropriate or they may not reduce the dust exposure enough. So, Respiratory protective equipment, RPE, has to be provided as well and you will need to make sure that the RPE is adequate for the amount and type of dust. RPE has an assigned protection factor which shows how much protection it can give the wearer. The general level for construction dust is an APF of 20. This means the wearer only breathes 1 20th of the amount of dust in the air. But please remember, RPE is the last line of protection. If you're just relying on RPE, you need to be able to fully justify your reason for this. So the RPE that's selected must be the most suitable for the work being carried out. Disposable masks or half masks can become uncomfortable to wear for long periods. Powered RPE can minimise this. Consider it when people are working for more than an hour without a break. It should be compatible with other items of protective equipment. It should fit the user and face fit testing is needed for tight fitting masks to be worn correctly. Anyone using tight fitting masks obviously needs to be clean shaven. Depending upon the work that you're carrying out, you may have to combine these measures with other controls. For instance, limiting the number of people near the work, rotating those doing the task, enclosing the work to stop the dust escaping, using sheeting or temporary screens, general mechanical ventilation to remove dusty air from the work area, for instance in enclosed spaces such as indoors, and selecting work clothes that do not keep hold of the dust, such as uh, woolen and open weave garments. You also need to inform your workforce about the dust risks and how this can harm their health, and how to use the dust controls and check that they are working, how to maintain and clean equipment and how to use and look after the RPE and other PPE that may be required, and what to do if something goes wrong. Once you've put all these control measures in place, you need to check that they're working correctly. Check the controls work by having procedures to ensure that work is done in the right way. Check the controls are effective. Does the work still seem very dusty? You might need to carry out dust exposure monitoring and involve the workforce. They can help identify problems and help find solutions. I hope you found the uh, podcast in informative and helpful. And now just a little bit about BSG and who we are. So the Building Safety Group was established in 1965 and we're the largest construction safety group operating throughout mainland UK. We're a not-for-profit organisation that's owned by our members for the benefit of our members and we're recognised by the HSE. We currently have an impressive 800 member companies with us and with our team of highly qualified safety advisors delivering over 20,000 site inspections every year and over 10,000 people attend our training courses every year which are also held across the UK. So once again thank you for listening I hope you found it uh, useful helpful and informative but if you have any questions or would like to know more about it please do contact me details are on the screen now and I look forward to hearing from you.